Education for Tuesday, November 19th to order. Um, we just returned from closed session where we uh, discussed and gave the, the direction concerning topics on negotiations. Uh, please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the next order of business is approval of the agenda. Do we have anyone that wants to um, discuss any agenda changes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So move. We accept the agenda as is. Second. Okay. Please vote. Okay. So it's uh, three eyes. Member Mensinger stepped out for the moment. And next we move to student council reports and school spotlight, spotlight presentation. Dr. Markin. Thank you, Vice President Thomas. Um, representing Newark Memorial High School student board representative, Nicole Chee. Nicole. FCA had transparent as speaker and hip hop artist visit at lunch to inspire students in the old gym. Link crew reconnected with their freshmen with frozen hot cocoa, which was ice cream and hot chocolate after school last Friday with over 220 people in attendance. Yesterday, Sacramento State visited our campus at lunch, and this Thursday, Cal State East Bay is having on-the-spot admissions by appointment through Naviance. Volunteer opportunities are available for students to become a reading buddy to elementary school students through the Newark Library. Snow School has openings for their craft night, and interactors will be working at Newark Rotary's Crab Feed this Saturday. Um, the drama department's A Street Card Named Desire opens December 6th with tickets at $6 for pre-order and $12 at the door. Each class, Link Crew, um, Club CSF, FCA, Softball, and Volleyball are all adopting a family this season. Our canned food drive has collected over 700 cans out of our goal of 2,500 by winter break. February 21st. Newark Memorial will host a Special Olympics basketball tournament. Mrs. Gray, Coach K, and Mr. Morales are planning a team, and this is supposed to be larger than the soccer tournament at American, so we're very excited about that. And um, report card night is this Thursday at 6 to 8 in the old gym, if any of you guys are interested in visiting. Thank you. Next, we have our spotlight. This evening's spotlight is Whiteford Preschool. Mr. Irwin. Thank you. We're moving so quickly. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Vice President Thomas and members of the board, Dr. Markin. Um, when we do a spotlight presentation prior to the spotlight beginning, we always want to spotlight um, two of our employees. Uh, and this evening, we have the pleasure to spotlight two employees from Whiteford. I'd like to invite Mary Alberts up. Mary has been an employee in the district for nine years. She has worked at several schools throughout her years here at the, in the district, Schilling, Newark Memorial, Lincoln, Bunker, Snow, and Milani. For the past seven years, she has worked at Whiteford Preschool as a speech pathology assistant. Mary loves her job, and this is shown daily. When she was asked what did she love most about her job, her response was, I don't know, this is what they told me, so. <laughs> I don't know if I can come up with only one thing that I love about my job. Among the many things she loves, um, she has expressed her love in seeing her students transform. Mary goes above and beyond, and it shows every day in her work, and she is Whiteford's Spotlight Classified employee. Congratulations. Michael Dolmage. <clears throat> Michael is new to Newark Unified School Districts um, and to Whiteford staff. Um, he's joined the district this school year. He comes to Newark with 15 years of experience 
working with children on the autism spectrum. Of all the age groups, Michael takes the most delight in working with the preschool-aged children. He states that he is very hap happy and grateful to be working with a compassionate community of teachers and staff and being part of the Whiteford team. In the short time Michael has been with the Newark team, he has secured grants to purchase equipment for his students, and his Whiteford classroom has served as a model for our intern, our new intern teachers who are working with autistic students. We congratulate Michael on being Whiteford's certificated spotlight employee. It's now my pleasure to introduce the uh, director principal of Whiteford, uh, Nanette Gray. that our two honorees, if they would come and um, take pictures. We're so excited to have them along with uh, members of our other staff. You can come around in front and take your picture. <laughs> there you go. Everybody smile. This is Christmas card time. <laughs> I am so honored to be um, the director of special education and the principal of Whiteford Preschool. You see all of the hard work we have on the board behind you. And this is uh, actually student created work um, supported by our great staff at Whiteford. At Whiteford Preschool, we have four classes. We have two autism specific classrooms. Uh, the teachers are Michael Delmich. Uh, who we honor tonight, and uh, Megan McMillan. So uh, I appreciate, they for, for, appreciate them for being here tonight. And we have two what we call non-categorical special day classroom, and this is a mixture of students who may, be, may have mild, moderate disabilities along with some moderate to severe disabilities. Um, so we have our lead teacher, Julia Weber, and Alyssa Jensen. So we have a, a lot of support staff at Whiteford to support the needs of the students. Um, we have a school psychologist, a speech pathologist, and one of our speech pathologists is here, Penny. Um, wave your hand, Penny. Uh, along with Mary, who supports Penny, and, and our other speech therapist, Iris Lee. We have an occupational therapist who not only supports the students at Whiteford, but supports students across the district. We have a part-time administrative secretary, Katie Gilroy, an adaptive uh, physical education teacher, Thomas Bauer, and a host of special education aides. Also, we serve students who uh, range from students who may be on the autism spectrum all the way to having a visual impairment. Uh, and when we have students who have such um, low incidence uh, disabilities, we um, are provided with services from our SELPA uh, to provide uh, vision impairment um, services for those students. Uh, currently at Whiteford Preschool, we have 31 special day class preschoolers. We have nine students pending. What makes their job very difficult with the staff here at uh, Whiteford is that uh, students are assessed all year long. So sometimes we'll start with low numbers. Sometimes by January, we're, bu we're uh, budging at the seams. Uh, so there it, it ebbs and flows throughout the school year based on when students turn three. Um, we have a total of 21 speech only students and we also have uh, what we call reverse mainstreaming, six typically developing students um, that are placed inside our special day classrooms to serve as models for our students with disabilities. I'm very excited. This is the very first year that we've partnered with Head Start to be able to provide a least restrictive environment for those students who can be supported within a, quote, general education setting. So our, our 
teachers and our IEP teams identify the students who need special education support but can have access to general education curriculum. So we identify students through the IEP process who would benefit from being a part of Head Start. So with the MOU with, with Head Start, we have a total of five students that are fully included into the Head Start program. They follow the Head Start curriculum, but they are supported by a special education aid, and they are provided with training from our district personnel and also from our classroom teachers. So you may ask, how, are, how do students get into Whiteford? How are they referred? So a student is referred to the district for a special education assessment through a lot of our agencies called uh, Regional Center of the East Bay or an infant early start program, which is out of Fremont Unified School District. So prior to a student turning three, the district is notified uh, about 90 days out that this student um, is, is a part of the Regional Center of the East Bay or a part of early start. And so they're referred to the district. We do a district level assessment to determine if this student qualifies for special education services. We also receive referrals from parent referrals, community referrals, physicians, um, and any other person who may suspect that a student may have a disability. Uh, if it is a parent referral, the parent fills out a packet, uh, and then we take a look to see if a student has a suspected disability, and then we move forward with um, a special education assessment to determine. So um, I want to congratulate my team. I'm going to ask if they would please stand again to be recognized for all of their hard work. And I appreciate them for coming out in such a rainy night. Fabulous, fabulous team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Any questions from I have, um, Ms. Rodriguez? Dr. Gray, thank you for an excellent um, present presentation. Um, Mrs. President Crocker, or Member Crocker, is not here, but you know we've been doing Mr. and Mrs. Stanner for um, at Whiteford <laughs> for about ten years, and uh, and we really love it. And having my nephew there the last few years, and um, and um, a close friend of the family's son, um, Christine's uh, little boy, um, um, little girl. Um, you know, I've seen you know what hands on the Whiteford staff has with those kids. Um, and you know, um, you know, we value all our teachers and all our employees and we think anybody that decides to, you know, um, work in education, educating our kids are special people. Mm -hmm. But very special would be the, um, the staff that works with special ed kids, in my opinion. And, uh, um, and we have a staff that's second to none and the wonderful things they do there. And it's just, uh, it's just amazing to see the growth, you know, from the toddler stage until, until they exit, you know, if they do, you know, at age five or, or six. And uh, so, you know, with you coming on in January and, um, and, and I know you've had a positive influence on, on the staff there and they welcome you in. And, and I know it's been a nice back and forth with, with the Whiteford staff and, and yourself. And uh, it's really, really appreciated. We, we, um, you know, we really appreciate what goes on there, as what goes on in a lot of our schools. But again, you know, special, special people, you know, teach special, special ed kids. Yes. So, we appreciate those uh, nice comments, um, but the accolades go to the staff. Right. Great right. job. They yeah. do a fabulous <clears throat> job. Thank and you very much. I'd like to add to, to that, and and say what a wonderful job. Whiteford is doing with our, our preschoolers. And I, in my memory, this is maybe the first time we've spotlighted White, Whiteford. And I hope, Dr. Markin, that we can do it every year and, and hear about the, the good work that staff is doing with our little ones. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you for not bringing any kids so they can see who Santa <laughs> is and stuff. And just, uh, <laughs> we, try to, we try to keep that a secret. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So next announcements, Yes, thank you. Thank you, Vice President Thomas. And, and this is the special ed uh, staff, Nanette Gray show. She, we, the board and uh, cabinet and anyone who was in attendance had the opportunity to be in a work session 
on special education and it was absolutely outstanding and ironically placed as the highlighting of Whiteford Preschool. Um, so we really, really appreciate the staff and um, everything you do for our children. And again, thank you very much. Just a couple brief announcements, if I may. Um, this Thursday, the 21st, is our monthly law enforcement partnership meeting where we get together with the many of from law enforcement in Newark and uh, many of our admin, our assistant principals, principals, and many of our elementary principals as well. Also on Thursday night is report card night at Newark Memorial High School beginning at 6. Um, on December 5th, uh, Newark Memorial High School in the library is having an art fair, art, <clears throat> There you go. Art gallery where it's $10 and that ticket will get you a piece of student artwork. And that is from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. in the library. And each ticket um, entitles you to a piece of artwork. So we appreciate that. There are a couple other announcements. Sorry, that was December 6th? Is that what you said? December 5th. I'm sorry. December 5th. December 5th. Thank you. Um, that we have another announcement, and, and uh, Nicole mentioned it briefly, but I know we had a, a big event that actually um, Nanette Gray brought to Newark and to um, ourselves, and that was the Special Olympics. And Nicole mentioned it, but I know we had a couple board members that would like to comment, it, comment on it as well. I was planning to be there and got extremely sick the night before and um, was down for the count for three and a half days. So. Um, I'd like to also give uh, Mr. Stadler and Mr. Rodriguez an opportunity. I know they were there also representing the district. Yeah, Ray and I went to the Special Olympics, and I'm telling you, good job. Man, those kids had such a good time. Their smiles were ear to ear. And they, it was a soccer tournament. Ended up that the, the last game was our junior high against our high school team, and they tied. So everybody won. And I'm telling you, they loved it. I've never seen little Izzy so excited in my life. And it, it was it was fantastic. And I cannot wait for the basketball one. Good job. Um, it was, you were late, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, um, when you see, um, and I know we're going to have a report from RP. When you th see the three di the three districts working together on a project of, of this magnitude, um, the first time we've done it, and um, the f it, was, it was soccer in Fremont hosted over American High School hosted the event, but it was so much like um, they try to make it so much like the regular Olympics, and the kids marched in with their banners, you know, every every school and their staff, and, um, and there was a, a moderator talking on the mic, and he was trying to say something, and one of the special ed kids grabbed the mic away from him, started running away and, and talking, and it was so special. <laughs> and, uh, and then one of the kids was jumping all over the gym, and, uh, but um, um, it was, the gym was packed. Uh, I don't know how many people were there, but I, it had to be way over a thousand. And, um, and so I wanted, Dr. Markin, if you can convey our, our thanks to Dr. Morris and Fremont for, for hosting it. Mm. And we're going to host the next one, <coughs> and I think that's in April, I think? No. February. 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 Okay. And that'll be basketball. So, and then having staff or young people that are not special ed students there supporting the special ed students, that to me was special also. So, um, and um, it was just beautiful event it went what for two hours I think two or three hours two or three hours yeah it was fantastic and uh, fantastic again um, I know there was a lot of work that went into it and it's again it's appreciated and uh, hopefully we can get some pictures at some point maybe you can share with us okay. I don't want pictures with you in it I want pictures with <laughs> thank you I'm only kidding <laughs> okay. um, thank just, you just one further comment um, uh, member Thomas and I met with um, Mr. Morales, the principal at Newark Memorial last night about another issue, but he mentioned that they already have 22 teams signed up for the basketball That's tournament in, uh, that Nicole was talking about earlier. That's so uh, the, the event at Newark Memorial is going to be 
very special and probably That's even true. larger than. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Markin did send Ms. Mm -hmm. Ashmore, and, uh, yes. and she, mm -hmm. she was there representing her. So it was great. Thank you. How are you? Well, the, the last um, thing I, I would say is, as most of you, next week uh, there are no students. It's uh, Thanksgiving break and week. And, and on behalf of the board, I would like to wish our staff and our students, our teachers, a very restful, enjoyable week. It's been, uh, we have a phenomenal group of professionals, and uh, we really hope that they enjoy and relax. Uh, and spending time with their family and, and having some time away and happy Thanksgiving certainly in advance to the board and to all of our employees and family and friends. We really appreciate the family in Newark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Dr. Market, would you um, introduce the staff reports, please? I would like to. Thank you, um, Vice President Thomas. Our first staff report, um, we got a chance to meet our new um, Superintendent of Mission Valley ROP and uh, Superintendent Tom Hansen. Uh, we've had uh, several opportunities to meet together as a small group and a group of, of educators. He has met individually with uh, Mr. Orpit at, at Bridgepoint and Crossroads as well as Mr. Morales and his staff. We've met several times together, and we've asked him to come and do an overview for the board on Mission Valley ROP, answer any questions they may have, and we welcome you. Um, Mr. Hansen was a, uh, well, I don't want to steal your thunder, but was an administrator in that other district. There's no thunder there. There, yeah. <laughs> just a whisper. There, exactly. Thank you. And so it really is a pleasure to have opportunity. We went to their open house, several of us did, and uh, very excited about our partnership. And without any further ado, I'll turn it over to you, to Mr. Hansen and your staff. So, Tom, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Vice President Thomas. Thank you for uh, allowing us to come and address the board uh, in your community tonight. Um, board. Dr. Markin, thank you very much, Superintendency. I'd like to introduce um, uh, the Director of Ed Services at uh, Mission Valley ROP, Margie Trujillo. She's going to talk a little bit about um, specific programming uh, details that uh, she should probably uh, talk about more than I can. I, I find myself uh, kind of stepping on people's toes, and one of the things, uh, one of the things I'm working on. Um, we want to just kind of give you a snapshot of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what we're looking forward to. Um, we think there's, you know, lots of conversations to have. We've been uh, happy uh, to visit with uh, site leadership in Newark, and we, uh, we just want to um, give you an overview. Uh, I'd like to start with our mission statement. Our mission statement, um, I just want to highlight that we are a, a CTE delivery program. We're a CTE delivery uh, system. Uh, career technical education is what we do. Um, and our mission statement is different than what you find in every other school. It's to prepare students for employment and college through industry standard tools and experience and training. So, you know, with that being the backdrop of everything we do, um, which is different from what we find in 912 schools everywhere. So, you know, Newark Memorial, of, mm -hmm. you know, has a, a, a very vibrant program, but they will struggle with implementing CTE like every high school I've ever seen. You know, it's the fun stuff that's very, very difficult to do on your own. So uh, with that, we try and um, figure out what steps are next to, to have best fit programming in each school while trying to, um, trying to uh, it, you know, have a, a fairly level offering across the JPA. So that's what we want to talk about tonight. Um, Mr. Heal can take over from here. Thank you very much. Um, as a superintendent stated, we have been in career technical education. We've been in business for over 40 years, and we've been providing the CTE um, courses for students throughout the Tri-Cities area. One of the reasons we've been so successful is because of the strong partnerships we have with business and industry. Some of our partners include um, uh, Cargill, Lamb Research, TGIF, and Peterson Dean. They have been very strong supporters of all of our programs and they have helped us to develop curriculum 
and helped train our students so that we are providing the highest quality you know, education for the students and giving them the skills that are necessary to gain employment once they leave high school. We not only prepare students for careers, but we also prepare students for college. We currently have 16 courses that receive UC A to G credit and 20 courses that are articulated with the community colleges. Some of the programs that we are offering right now at Newark Memorial include biotechnology, sales and marketing. We also have a very strong culinary program over there. And most recently, we have a couple of our teachers working in the MCA Academy and helping to get the studio open so that the students can um, experience that, that beautiful studio that is over at Newark Memorial High School. Um, our internships are offered for students at the ROP Center. We have almost 400 students each year who are working out in the field in internship opportunities. All of our medical students go out on internships during the second semester, as well as students who are in careers in education. So many of our students are also able to get jobs right out of high school that will help, help them, um, you know, they can stay in their jobs or with the CTE classes that they've taken, they are able to support themselves while they go on to college. The recent programs that we're focusing on at the ROP Center are Project Lead the Way. We, we also have an auto program that we brought back and our construction program. The auto program was suspended for a few years and we redid the shop and now the shop is, is just an awesome place. If you haven't seen it, I invite you to come over and take a look at it. We also have a strong construction program and we're partnering with Kennedy High School with some of the classes. They have geometry and construction so the students can understand what the relevance is with geometry and they, when they go out and they actually start building and using, using those skills in an, in a on hands-on way. Project Lead the Way is a program we have been working on for the past four years and we have the capstone class that's just starting at our center this year with civil engineering and architecture. Um, as recent as yesterday, I met with um, the principal over at Newark Memorial and we are hoping that we will be able to start a Project Lead the Way class in the fall. We are looking at intro to engineering we also have a um, strong law enforcement class that we started at the center this year. We've been in conversations with the commander at Newark Police Department, and in speaking with Principal Morales yesterday, we are making plans to start a law enforcement class on the Newark campus in the fall as well. Um, some of the things that we do to promote career technical education, uh, again, we had our open house that some of you were able to visit in October, so you were able to see what we offer on our, our campus over there. Um, I invite you to look at our website. We, we have a lot of um, student success stories as well as videos that were made by students that talk about their experiences in, in the class. So at this point, I will turn it over to Superintendent Hanson. Thank you, Margie. Um, Mr. Hill um, made a, a couple of comments about um, plans for next year at New Memorial High School. Uh, Chief uh, Leal and uh, Commander uh, Mike Carroll, um, they came and talked to us about uh, how, to, how to implement a program that would be sustainable over a period of years. So it would be something like a, you know, a law enforcement level one at uh, Newark Memorial fashioned after what Union City Police Department and James Logan have put together at their school and that that's the only school really where this program is functioning so we have a blueprint and about six seven years of experience so this is a uh, it's a little bit of a collaborative effort and uh, Fremont is not doing uh, any of that yet um, but uh, we have uh, we have some good ideas and uh, it's it's nice to know that uh, we're making some some progress uh, to talk about some new ideas at Newark Memorial so that's great um, this uh, this slide here uh, this is you know kind of an overview of the uh, joint power agreement that the the three district um, relationship uh, the service to Fremont New Haven and Newark Newark Unified School Districts you can see that there the the uh, majority of students that participate 
in uh, Mission Valley and uh, at satellite campuses are, of course, from Fremont. Um, and then uh, New Haven and Newark are uh, smaller pieces of that. And I just want to point out that we've been, um, we've been operating on, uh, you know, percentage participation um, of 18, 21, and 65 percent, roughly. So it's essentially a 20, 20, 60 uh, JPA arrangement. Um, the the stacked bar charts on the on the right side show the red is the uh, the red is the the participation of students at the center, and the blue bar the blue bars uh, and the numbers on the uh, on the vertical are the actual n number of students participating. Uh, with Mission Valley, so the Newark the Newark blue bar says that there's 600 students um, participating at the high school and just under 200 at the center. So, and you can see there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a uh, a geographic um, you know correlation there. It's probably a little more difficult for kids from Logan to ride the bus up to the center, and that that's uh, represented here. This is, uh, this is a, uh, a student count per year, uh, essentially. It's a, it's a service to Newark uh, graph that shows that, you know, once, once Mission Valley ROP's uh, attendance and student service kind of um, hit, a, I think, essentially a, a low at 2010-11, we've started to um, pick up uh, and be able to offer a few more classes. So uh, Newark uh, being, being the smallest, uh, the smallest participating comprehensive high school, they lost fewer, you know, Newark lost fewer classes in our reductions over the past five years. And when they pick up classes, it's, it's that, it's proportionately a bigger gain. So um, none of the other, uh, the other two uh, districts don't have this kind of a gain. But again, it's proportional. Um, these numbers are kind of small, but they uh, they kind of tell you where uh, where we are uh, gaining uh, gaining enrollment at Newark Memorial High School, and maybe uh, against uh, center enrollment. So, um, you know, it's just interesting. Uh, the culinary numbers have been strong. Uh, business and careers has been fairly consistent. Um, the, the ROP center numbers are the kind of interesting. The transportation technology is up a bit. Uh, construction technology is a little tougher to fill in the afternoon. Um, the public services, I suspect, is going to grow, um, both at the campus and probably at the center if we do a, a level two, like boot camp in the summer. Um, so it's, uh, uh, we have a four-year uh, four trend of, of a total of 574 up to 738. Uh, this is a, uh, a representation of what we just looked at, uh, Mission Valley RP Center enrollment versus the Newark Memorial Campus. You can see that it's, it's kind of proportional. You know, when the, when the center, and we, we want to be able to have our program look and behave this way. If we get proportional increases at the center, we should probably see proportional increases at the sites as well. So, and that's what this shows. Of course, I wasn't working at Mission Valley ROP during, you know, these years, but it, this makes sense. And it, if you look at the kind of programming and, and the, the staff and the ability we have to place teachers at schools, this is a, this is a, a, a good piece of, um, a good piece to look at. Um, to finish up our, our, our priorities uh, right now, we want to focus on uh, sustainability of our programs and pathways. You know, when we had a chance to talk with uh, representatives from the Newark uh, Police Department, the, the conversation uh, so the conversation was was wrapped in what do we do two, three, four years from now? How does this look? How many kids do we want to serve? What are the outcomes going to be for the community? So that that makes sense to us. Um, we're uh, we're in a position to have a conversation about uh, STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math in in the form of Project Lead the Way at Newark Memorial. Um, it, it's very possible that we would start with a single section that would grow. And, you know, these, uh, none of these programs develop overnight, and they, uh, 
there are ways to, to have them be maintainable and sustainable over long periods of time. So that's a, that's a big goal of ours. Um, we want to invest in programs uh, that maintain and maintain industry standard um, student experiences. Of course, um, bringing the police department in for a conversation is, uh, is very good, it's enlightening. They have a lot of interest uh, that you know, we, we share but aren't, aren't absolutely critical to our program, for example. Local, local police departments want to see healthy explorer feeding programs come from, from 912. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want to be able to hire folks that they know for the department, either sworn or non-sworn positions. So when, uh, when the police department comes and talks to us about law enforcement one, maybe a boot camp and a, a pre-explorer program, their interest is in the community at levels that we're really not, uh, you know, so so tightly tied to, but we can work together and serve each other. So, um, we 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 uh, we we have a lot of crossover. Uh, and the last thing to work to equalize career technical education enrollment at comprehensive sites, we want to be able to um, take. We want to take advantage of the opportunities we have at Newark Memorial High School. Uh, there are there are some. Uh, some, some campuses in the Fremont Unified School District that we are not as active in as we are in others, and we want to take a look at how we can equalize our, our, uh, our expenditures and our, uh, our resources to best serve all students. So with that, I'd like to thank you again for allowing us to, to talk to you tonight and uh, would welcome any questions. Sure. Yes. That's yes. Okay. And uh, I love your fire science program. It's and, it's uh, fun. Let's get that fire science program going because please we need heroes. Too. Yes. <laughs> the the uh, the the officers that talked to us a, a couple of weeks ago mentioned uh, joint uh, you know co collaborative uh, exercises with students between fire forensics and the law enforcement uh, you know classes. It, you know, their ideas, not ours initially, and they're good ones. You know, we, we uh, it's a fine example of partnering. Yeah, and thank you uh, very much for the presentation. There's a couple of things that um, I, I too had a you had mentioned the law enforcement, and uh, Mr. Stadler mentioned the fire uh, fire service, uh, the explorer program there. Did, did that drop off or something? The fire science, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a program that uh, runs at the center, right. Um, no, I know it was flourishing a, a couple of years ago. Yes, it's, it is. It's it's very healthy. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, um, you also um, uh, mentioned the engineering yes. uh, piece of it, and it's something new. Is that like an introduction to engineering, or it is? Uh, it's a variety of things. Um, you know, the, the the best way to get a flavor for Project Lead the Way is to go to projectleadtheway.org. It's a it's a national organization that that essentially creates and uh, promotes uh, engineering, math, science, and technology in, uh, in school, not just high school, uh, middle school, and I think there's even some modules for elementary school as well. Um, Project Lead the Way is, is something that you can join. You pay for it. You train your teachers in the summer. You buy, uh, you, you essentially purchase rigorous curriculum that's already done. It's canned. It's, it's very similar to AP in that regard. Uh, you buy the program, you train your teachers, and you put students in, a, a, in an interactive, interesting, multidisciplinary, high rigor engineering uh, coursework. There's a project, uh, uh, principles of uh, uh, design and intro to engineering. There are introductory courses for grades 9, 10, or 10, 11, and then after that, there are a variety of courses that students could take. So uh, they, they essentially have a menu. You know, no single school or district would probably do all or maybe not even more than half of the six you know post intro courses that project project lead the way offers so what what uh, what we currently do at the center we have a civil engineering and architecture section mm -hmm. uh it's in a uh it's in a uh, a classroom and a lab environment that is very nice it's it's big it's spacious it's new uh, it's not the kind of environment that any of our any of the service the schools we service 
are, are going to easily be able to uh, replicate. So this is not the kind of experience you would find at, at uh, any of the uh, high schools. Um, so our hope is to build intro opportunities, the intro to design and, um, and engineering principles courses at, at our satellite sites and then have students come to the center for something for two or three of the remaining six classes, digital engineering, civil engineering and architecture we're already doing. So there's room to grow in both satellite schools and in our uh, comprehensives Thank and you. at the center, all tied together to offer as comprehensive <coughs> as a program as we can without a replication of, of, uh, of effort. Now, are these A to G courses? Yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. The intro class receives F credit, the fine arts. Uh -huh. The other classes receive elective credit, G elective credit. Okay, but they are A to G. Okay, yes. very good. And. I had heard there was also a DHS class. It's a it's a it's a digital electronics. It's one of the uh, it's one of the uh, courses on the menu that you can uh, that you can implement that you can you can buy and and put it uh, put in your program. You know the, the the trick the trick here to get started is these courses are electives, and they have to fit in the 24 course hour student program. So students start it. Newark Memorial in the ninth grade, and they have 24 classes that they can take in a six period day in four years. So they need to be strategic and, and well thought through and planned what they're gonna take in what year. Mm -hmm. So Project Lead the Way is a program that competes with a lot of other um, you know, higher rigor course opportunities. And they're electives. Yeah, yeah considering you. <clears throat> you know, the number of electives that are actually, because of the, the rigor that we have in our curriculum, there's really not a whole lot of availability. Uh, True. There was only what one class as a sophomore, two as a freshman, two as a that's junior, right. Two as a yeah. You know mm -hmm. what we what we're considering doing is suggesting and you know heavily suggesting to our, our the principals and schedulers at the uh, our partnering high schools to offer one intro class in the tenth grade, one intro class in the eleventh mm -hmm. grade, and then expect them uh, students and not all of them uh, maybe. 25% of kids who do the first and second year to actually come to the center for a, a culminating experience in one of the two or three classes that we would eventually end up offering. That's <coughs> realistic when you have uh, the kind of pressure on a four-year program that's, that's normal. So principals are thinking, hmm, maybe if a student takes this extra elective in the 10th grade, I can offer zero period or after school phys ed because that would be the class that would be exchanged, and then there's a little less pressure when the student gets to be an 11th grader. Yeah. They have one, one, last, Mr. one last question, just one last question on that, uh, or a different topic, but uh, transportation. Um, uh, there, were, there was a certain period of time where transportation wasn't going from our McGregor site to ROP and back. They were going like one way, and then, you know, uh, have we got that all settled and everything? Yes, I, I believe that's been corrected. We we don't have any plans to change our our current uh, our current service. Thank you, okay. Mr. Rodriguez. You should have took a long time. You know that. And I tried but to. But it was very sorry. <laughs> You of all people. Are, are you are you texting? Yes, I'm. I'm actually watching a football game. <laughs> Anyway, um, I wanted to, uh, <laughs> no, he's only kidding, by the way. Um, <laughs> I wanted to thank you for coming. Um, and our um, RP rep, um, and I'm the second, is uh, member Thomas. And, uh, and, and I know you and Dr. Markin have a nice relationship going and, and what you're doing at the high school. Um, you know, I already told you that years ago I tried to get you to come over to Newark to be the high school principal, and you decided to stay at Kennedy. I wasn't very happy about that, by the way. I'm sorry you came about from that. Kennedy? Okay. Came from Kennedy? Yeah. That's my mm -hmm. alma mater. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he claims to play football at Kennedy. He didn't do very well. But <laughs> anyway, um, um, years ago I had the, the pleasure of being on the board when, um, the RP board, when we voted to, um, to build the center that you're in. and. Um, and it was, we were just so excited, you know, when, when we saw the blueprints. And, um, and now that it's been open for a while, and, and I know about you, um, you know, what's been going on there and seeing firsthand at the open house and uh, all the wonderful programs. And, 
And then I'm excited on you expanding because one of the things I always fought for was getting more, you know, uh, programs for Newark. And uh, so I'm excited to hear that you're working with, you know, Principal Morales and uh, and the police department and bringing some of that to Newark. I was over, I was always envious of, uh, you know, Logan and and New Haven for some of the programs they had. But I I did have a few questions. Um, I thought you already asked them. No, no, no. I was just making a comment. But, uh, <laughs> Um, the, um, you know, for years we talked about, in, in other states they have what they call pathways, and they work with the kids at the junior high school level to make decisions on, you know, what pathway they're going to go when they get to the high school. And only years ago we did talk about having some kind of a presence with the junior high school kids. Um, so can you kind of share that? Is that something we're still trying to do? or I, I think it's something, you know, I think it's something we're still trying to do uh, from the uh, from the Mission Valley side. I mean, I, I heard uh, uh, student member Chi talk about uh, uh, Naviance invite. Um, they, Naviance has the capability of of putting together uh, six year plans. So the uh, the essentially your your uh, your subscription to Naviance can bundle students from uh, from the junior high school and all of the high school students into one into one group, you, you know, the, you don't have to differentiate and not include seventh and eighth graders. Um, so there, there's a potential to use some of the tools that you already have to give them a snapshot of, you know, not just the, tw the 24 course hour, the high school program, but how the junior high program needs to be, needs to dovetail into their plans as a ninth grade, get them thinking uh, and creating a vision of the future as soon as possible. Um, we have uh, we have participated in some neighborhood exposure things, but it's it's essentially Walters Junior High. They can walk to us. We right. I don't think we've done any busing, uh, and uh, but it's a no. But it is something you you know that that's you know you're thinking about as far as mm -hmm. maybe having a presence there. Um, the um, alternative schools, because you know again you know Fremont had a nice program and and we lost some over at Bridgepoint. And I know you're working on, on doing something there. Can you share that a little bit, if you sure. don't mind? Um, I've, uh, I've had a chance to talk to, to uh, Principal uh, Tom Orput a number of times about a couple of different um, hopes that we have. Uh, one is to, uh, you know, kind of blow the dust off of the culinary uh, facility and do uh, some, um, some upgrades in that room that would be you know, essentially equipment, um, hire a, a chef, and probably share the chef, at least initially, with uh, Conley Caraballo uh, from uh, the continuation school in, in New Haven. So both of those schools would have a 50% uh, culinary art program. We, we have the opportunity uh, to do some, um, you know, some, some program improvements this year. Uh, a, a second, a second idea that we're working with uh, Mr. Orput on is a, a course that focuses on on uh, workplace survival, um, soft skills, if you will, uh, interviewing techniques. You know how to dress up, uh, preparing a resume. Uh, yeah. We we hope to um, put together the tools for a computer lab so students have a tech have a, a technological foundation that will allow them to step into the workplace and hopefully be much more successful when, when, they're, when they're employed. Um, those would both be, the plan is to have them both be half-time positions at least, at least by next fall and maybe sooner. He has a quarter system. We could start uh, part or both of them in April. So that's one of the reasons I'm talking to him as frequently as I am to figure out, you know, kind of where we are with what we have. Thank you. I had, um, I know you have, you, you reach out to and have programs for special ed kids and um, you know that, that want to take some of the programs that are available but I wanted to ask you real quick and um, on the adult and I know Delani Hancock bill years ago kind of changed the dynamics of ROPs mm -hmm. and uh, so we're not able to, to serve as many adults as we did before um, but that's that's a big concern to a lot of the parents and, and because the the child or the student takes courses at the high school and then um, and then if they don't have guidance they end up going to some of these schools that rip them off you know charge twenty thirty thousand dollars 
where they might be able to take a similar course like an adult school. Um, so do you work with, as, as the kids exit seniors in high school, if, if it looks like they're going to be taking adult programs on, you know, what to look for and maybe going to a community um, college we and don't. stuff like that without having to pay all that money? Right. We, we, we can advertise programming, and, and Mr. Heo and I have been talking about um, the, the prospect of bringing back some adult programming in uh, next year. Um, we've already started with, with some things. We have a pharmacy tech program going right now. It just started in November. So that's the first. We're also talking about a home health aid class that maybe we can offer. That's a short 40-hour program that we can offer in both June and in August for um, people who already have their CNA license. You actually have to have the card and right. be active. So we're working on that. We're also looking at maybe an AutoCAD class, you know, just kind of throwing things out there, right. not really sure at this point. Right. But you do offer Thank counseling you. to seniors in high school on what to pitfalls that they may have if they're going to continue with tech classes and stuff like that as adults. We don't, we don't, have, a, we don't have counseling resources at the center. Um, but what we do have, we do have career center tech, uh, you know, um, tech employees that are at each high school. So we have monthly meetings where we share this information okay. and uh, do our best to, you know, you, you know, kind of sew up the uh, the gaps in communication at the home site. But there there is still plenty of. Uh, plenty of room for students to be confused about what's next. You know, that's a that's always a, a challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I have to say, as a rep to to the ROP board, I really uh, am impressed with the direction that that you are taking and the care and the planning that you're doing. And I think everything is going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So next we have the first interim report. I, so we just turn that over to Ms. Nielsen. Thank you. Good evening, board. Superintendent Markin, Executive Cabinet, uh, our audience. Uh, I'm here to present the first interim report for the school year of 2013-2014 uh, on my mother's birthday. <laughs> Today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm uh, deciding the educational code that requires requires the board to approve a first interim report that covers the period ending October 31st. This has been in law the 24 years I've been here, so uh, nothing, nothing is new on there. Uh, the first interim report does um, reflect all the changes made from July through October 31st, and there have been a lot. <laughs> Uh, we first look at the enrollment, and we certified with uh, CalPADS last week for the uh, enrollment, and we are at 6,294. I don't have it in front of me. And uh, that is down uh, 164 from what I budgeted. Again, it was in our kindergarten, and those... The estimate that I used in the budget, I used with the help of Davis Demographics, and they had programmed in some um, growth from area three and four that we know has not started. So I have redone the estimated enrollment and ADA calculations for the uh, 14, 15, and 15, 16 school year, and we are still in a downward trend. The revenue assumptions, uh, we're using the local control funding formula, which is new this year, 
and is still under a lot of discussion at the uh, state of California. And if I could get some agreement between CDE, the California Department of Edge, the, the Department of Finance, and the uh, LAO Legislative Analyst Office, I'd really be happy, but there's no connectivity at this point. <laughs> so uh, again, we can use uh, the P2 ADA estimated for 1314 will be just a little over 6,000. Our local uh, control funding ADA, we can use either the current year or the prior year, whichever is higher. With declining enrollment, we will use last year's at 6,214.15. All of the federal um, programs, all of the current entitlements that we have received anything from the federal government, we have made the changes. I think the only one that I can remember that we've gotten since July is a preliminary Title I amount that decreased the revenue. I had decreased the revenue for Title I by 6%, and it was decreased another um, 8%. So we lost $37,000 in the estimate of what current year. We will get the actual figure probably sometime in January. But all the carryover um, has been added to the federal uh, programs. The state categorical programs. Uh, we're using the current year entitlements uh, with the prior year carryovers. You have to remember with LCFF, the only things left in state categorical programs are special ed and some very specialized grants, such as, I want to say partnership? partnership, partnership grant, which is a grant at the high school. So there are very, very, very few state categoricals left. After school. Oh, after school program, yes. And so we've got uh, the funding for lottery budget at 126 for the unrestricted side and $30 for the restricted side. No change from the budget. Uh, interest is still way down, uh, 0.35 is what we've estimated that will will average over the year and I'm hoping we come up to that last year we didn't make make it I want to review the local control funding uh, formula that I went over at the end of July this is changing a very very basic change we used to have revenue limits and categorical programs and now it's being changed to what we call a base grant, a supplemental grant, and a concentration grant. So this is my best estimate using three different softwares to try to figure out what it's going to be. Now this is the amount we will receive at full implementation which is 2021, it's eight years out. But you can see where they're doing the, uh, what I call the transitional kindergarten through third grade, T, uh, TK through third grade. Then it's broken out fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, then seventh and eighth, and then you have your nine, 10, and 12. You have a, a big grant and what they're calling the add-on for the K3 class size reduction and uh, CTE is career technical education that is added on to the base amount at the uh, 9 through 12 grade. And you can see where our ADA is um, broken out uh, through these three or four different slots. Now there is a, a caveat for the ADA for last year. It's not going by straight grade level for the special education students because we, do, we have not ever reported our ADA as that. Uh, I did get notification last month that they will be changing our ADA format so that special education will be uh, broken out by these different levels. But then you can see 
what you do when it's translated into money. And then you've got your transportation and what we call a TIG, which is the Targeted Improvement Instruction Grant. And that totals a certain amount. Then we go on to what we call our supplemental and concentration grants, again, in the four different areas. Now, with the certification of our um, CalPADS fall reporting one last week, our percentage of unduplicated students, which are EL students, um, social economical, economically disadvantaged, and your foster um, home children, I had tracked it just kind of loosely for two years at 58%. We certified um, last week at 60.90. So that will give us some more money in the supplemental and concentration. But what you see is we take 60.9% of the ADA, not the dollar amount, the ADA, versus a certain dollar amount that is 50% or no, 20% for the supplemental grant. And then your concentration grant, you can count the students over 55% in those areas. And so again, that's on the ADA. Then you add previous page to this one and you'll come to the $56 million in 2021. <laughs> okay, so then you've got your $56 million that you see as our target. And then our funding gap is calculated on last year's 12-13 revenue limit plus categoricals. And I'd like to put question marks after categoricals because no one can tell me what's in or out of that categorical amount. So this is an estimate of what I think it is and what the different softwares I've been using is telling us. And so you take, you look at the 56 million, subtract the 41 million, and you get a um, gap of 15 millions. And then for this year, out from the gap, we can recognize 11.78% of that, which gives us additional revenue there of 1 million, I think it's 700,000, that we will hopefully see. But as of right now, we will not know the final totals. Can you believe this? Till June or July of 2014. We will spend all year with estimates that we have no idea how close I am. We're going we're gonna to have to look at this at the end of the year and see how close you were. <laughs> yes. I don't, you know, I've, I have gone to a lot of workshops and I have talked to a lot of people up and down the state trying to figure out <laughs> what's going on. And this is my best estimate today. I leave for the CBO symposium tomorrow. It can change. <laughs> okay. Our expenditure assumptions, uh, the certified, certificated classified salaries and all of benefits have been revised to reflect actual costs, no longer estimates. Thank you for that again. <laughs> no problem. All the bargaining units, we're in negotiations right now, so uh, there are no changes in contract language that are uh, reflected in the uh, first interim. Uh, the cost of 1% is about $405,000, uh, $405, and you can see the breakdown between the different units. Uh, the, uh, we've got some, an increase in books and supplies and services and other operating costs. 
this is normal if you have carryover revenue that you're recognizing you also have to recognize corresponding expenditures this is normal and um, nothing out of the ordinary right now uh, indirect cost is budgeted at 5.16 percent and that's no change from the budget here you can see I'm taking I'm taking a look at the actual that we have received from 1213 what we had did when we adopted the budget and then what um, I'm recommending for the first interim and uh, you can see yeah this doesn't really tell you the the story but the yellow line this is our deficit spending so as of this point we're looking pretty good where you see the two green lines this is your three percent economic uncertainties and school services has recommend that we carry at least another three percent reserve mainly because we don't know what lcff is going to do so this is i'm using their recommendation i think it's prudent I know I'm very conservative, but I think it's a prudent issue that we do at this point. I like this slide. This one is fun. <laughs> you can see the differences. On the left, you can see where on the adopted budget that the other state revenue or the categoricals was at 20%. Am I supposed to stop? Um, and that our revenue limit was uh, 66. I need my eyes checked. And then you can see on the projected what LCFF does. You can see that more of it is on the LCFF side and the um, other state revenue is down. And it's just, it's proportional. There, it's just... It is what it is with the change that we're living through. But you can see the massive change that we're going through on the revenue from the state. And then this is the expenditures and the percentages it did not change. They stayed relatively the same. And here is the uh, multi-year projection that's required uh, with the first interim we have to take the first interim and then we have to do a projection for 14 15 and 15 16 so you can see on the revenue where each year we are uh, well for 14 15 I have to take out the carryover of the revenue that we carried from prior year so then actually we are getting uh, about two million dollars more per year on lcff projected through 14 15 and 15 16 at the models we're using today and then you can see again in yellow where we have the um, deficit spending and uh, again with the, the green lines with the reserve that i feel is prudent at this time we are doing a positive certification, which is I'm very happy about. <laughs> and then we have the other funds. You can see Fund 11, the adult education, uh, child development, uh, child nutrition, <coughs> our deferred maintenance. Actually, our deferred maintenance is uh, ma basically at about 40,000 should just start going away. Um, it's not being funded any longer. Uh, you can see our special reserve fund 17 the building fund fund 21 is where we have all of the bond money and we are anticipating spending more of that uh, the fund, fund 25 of the capital facilities is where we have developer fees and I was able to increase the uh, revenue because we received a check from Chevron for over $175,000 in July. So I was able to increase the revenue there. Fund 40 has very little in it at this point. Um, fund 51, uh, this is where the repayment 
uh, and the um, tax collecting for the repayment is made and that is basically handled all through uh, the Alameda Co County Office of Education. Uh, fund 67, uh, both of them, they're fund 67s. Uh, you can see our self-insurance insurance for our post-retirement benefits and also the uh, where we're self-insured for property and liability. We've got a few impacts, uh, declining enrollment. We've got cost of uh, step and column, which is almost 2%. Uh, negoti ongoing negotiations with both unions, implementation of common core standards, which could uh, great, uh, well, I know will greatly affect the budget in the coming years. Uh, we've got the budgeter, uh, budget's governor, the governor's budget for 15, 14, 15, coming up in January. It's usually released around the 10th of January. I believe we're signing up for um, that conference the 21st of January. The, the dates have been announced. The new uh, funding formula, uh, it's, all the regulations are still up in the air. Uh, and you can see in January. And we have to, this will be different when we adopt the budget this year. We also have a district plan or an LCAP, as if you've heard that statement, that has to be adopted at the same time as the budget, and they have to be the same. We have to be able to um, budget next year on this LCAP. And so I will be, Doreen and I will be uh, maybe creating a whole new chart of accounts to be able to address all of the LCAP requirements that we're going to, that the budget is now going to be required to do. I'm hoping to find out some more information on that December 3rd. So, questions? Um, Mr. Mensinger. Ooh, a whole new chart of accounts? Ooh, that's a lot of work. Well, yeah, no, it's fun. Okay, let the record show that her definition of fun and mine are a little bit different. Um, I had, after, you know, reading, you know, spending a couple of hours looking at uh, the interim, uh, your interim report, I had a ton of questions, and I realized that most of them would result in your answer going, I really don't know yet. So I refrain from even bothering you with them because, um, you know, so so two two quick questions, and the, this one relates to all those questions. Are you? Is it? Am I just being my normal cynical self, or are you really not going to know what you get until you get a check from the state? Check from the state. Uh, and if you'd like my nervous stomach, you can, I'd gladly share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the only other comment that I had is the, uh, the issues with um, areas three and four. And having lived in, the, in this town and seen, you know, movie theaters that were supposed to happen and other things that were supposed to happen and they didn't, I would, until somebody's out there with a shovel and actually cutting, you know, or digging in, I would not really I'm budget. Yeah, I'm going with my estimates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. That's it. Uh, I had a quick question. I noticed that um, there's a uh, decrease in the fund balance for child nutrition. Is that because they're buying capital equipment? Uh, yes. Well, thank you. And uh, last year when we closed the books, they were up over $100,000. Right. So they... So they're getting new refrigerators. We're, we're trying to replace some of the yeah. equipment in child nutrition that hasn't been replaced or fixed in several years. Great. Mr. Sadler? Uh, no, I just got it. I just got it answered. <laughs> I was looking at the child nutrition uh, 13 <laughs> at the ending balance, 951. Yes. 
It, um, very, um, child nutrition in this district is wildly successful. Successful, yes. So that's 951,000 yes. for child nutrition. Yes. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, thank no, you. that's that's <laughs> not. Uh, yeah, it's well, that's due dollars. to the uh, great management of Mary Sayer and exactly. her wonderful staff that works in child nutrition. Yeah, there was a nice ending balance there with all these others that. Yeah, uh, I w I will say in my, in the five districts I've been in, this is the only one that I've seen with a positive balance. Usually we're transferring money from the general fund. Wow. So they, I, that's why I say they are wildly yeah. successful. And my hat's off to the whole crew. Right. Uh, amen. Thank you, Ms. Nielsen. Next, uh, it's almost 8.30 and it's time for public comment on non-agenda items. And it's my pleasure to uh, invite to the podium Ms. Eileen McDonald. <laughs> Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, uh, President Pro Tem Thomas and Superintendent Markin and, and Newark Unified Board of Education. Um, for you tonight, after your first interim report, because, well, number one, I want to congratulate you on your positive certification. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is very awesome. Second of all, I am here on behalf of the League of Volunteers, and we had a special board meeting couple nights ago and as some of you know I was recruited to be on the board of love for one year with the purpose of being the liaison between League of Volunteers and the school district because I was very concerned about the debt that was out there so I'm very happy to report this evening three things and I better put on my glasses because I knew the clock would be ticking there will be an extra $5,000 payment coming to Newark Unified by the end of December, which is over and above the $1,000 per month that we're now paying. Number two, during the year 2014, there will be additional fundraisers that will be dedicated only to payment, repayment of the debt. There will be a few bingos, there will be a spaghetti feed, there will be a few extra things that you'll notice throughout the community. The money will all go 100% after the cost of whatever it cost us to put on the function, 100% will go to repay the debt. And the third thing which I'm especially excited about, the board voted and will meet in January to firm everything up. But they have decided that in the year 2014, every single fundraiser that Love has, a percentage will go of that to pay off the debt. So in other words, instead of starting new programs, instead of increasing programs, instead of doing more, we're gonna make sure that our obligation to Newark Unified is paid off. So my goal is to see the five-year plan, which is almost, I think we're into the sixth or seventh month already. I'm hoping that we can accelerate this, that it's paid off much sooner, because we all know the money goes to the kids. And that's what love wants, that's what we all want. So my other plea is to this board, and coming again from, from the League of Volunteer Board, what we'd really like to do is get back to a really good working relationship with the board, with the two boards working together, knowing that our common concerns are the same. They're for the children of Newark. So I'm, again, I'm here from the League of Volunteers to thank you for your patience, to tell you that we are going to work earnestly this year to do the most that we can, and then it will continue, but I'm hoping a good bulk can be, can be paid back this year. Okay, and I have 15 seconds left. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. McDonald. We we're delighted to hear that news, and we're grateful that you are on the board uh, of love. Thank you. Okay, next we move on to the um, consent agenda. Uh, item A, personnel items. Do we have a, a motion? I will approve. I will second. Please vote. Five, five eyes. Motion passes. Oh, student uh, doesn't vote. Do you, did you block uh, that student? I thought, I thought I did, but okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Next, we move on to non-personnel items. Are there any uh, items that board members would like to pull? I notice we do not have any. 
pull items from the public. Uh, B10. B10. That's the uh, Morning Star lease. and B7 are pulled so far, Mr. Sadler, did, that's, it. that's it. Okay, can I have a motion for B1 through B6, B8 and 9, and B9, 11 through 12? Okay, so I would like to make a motion that we approve items B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, uh, B6, uh, B8, B9, 11. B11, and B12. Second. Second. Please vote. We have four ayes, Member Crocker being absent. Next, we um, go to B7. Uh, staff pulled that one. Staff pulled that. Would you, would you like to um, address that? Oh, you pulled it. You didn't pull it in its entirety, did you? Uh, no, I did not. Actually, what I would I would like to pull personally because we've just got some more information today from the high school, and those are the kilns that are represented in the obsolete and surplus. I'd like to pull the kilns listed here and um, do some further research and bring that back to the board if necessary. So can we have a motion uh, for the other items on the list minus the kilns and have the minutes reflect that? Second. Okay, please vote. Right. Four ayes, member Crocker absent. Next, uh, we go to B10, and that was pulled by Mr. Mensinger. Yes, thank you very much. Um, the and thanks for putting the uh, the contract together um, uh, after reviewing it and I had a number of questions on it and Miss Nielsen was answer uh, able to answer uh, all of them uh, with the exception of one that I wanted to chat to the board about and that's the um, the uh, article that uh, talks about the increase after the um, uh, the first three years of the contract um, so we have a, a, a fee for the first three years, and then, and then it's up, and then there was an increase. And I'm okay with the increase that's stated in the contract, but what I'd like it stated against is um, the original contract number versus the, the new uh, contract, the cost. The cost of the new one is 1700 a month, but it's based on all kinds of work that's being done and contributed by... Um, uh, the renter. Um, uh, my feeling is after three years that that it should go back to the original rate, which is the twenty six hundred dollars, and then the five percent be on top of that, as opposed to the seventeen hundred. I have a question: Is is that um, is it a three year contract? One of the questions I had, and, and it came up before with regard to love, uh, was that it was kind of continued, rolled on over and over and over again. Can 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 the board request that after after the three years that a, the contract come back to us for renewal rather than be automatic renew automatically renewed? Uh, yes, that that can happen. Uh, I'll put it on our tickler file to be brought back. It, I would be, if that's the case, then I would, um, I, I, I have, if, if it's going to come back for renegotiation after three years then instead of an automatic, the 5%. then we don't need the 5%. We don't amount. even need the 5%. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Stadler. No, Mr. Ray Rodriguez is first. Oh, okay. Mr. Rodriguez. I'm not looking at my No, it's buttons. okay. Mrs. Nielsen, thank you for um, taking the time to, uh, to put this together. Um, when we decided to um, to sell the Russian site, um, you know, um, it's always a concern because of the tenants that we've had there. Especially um, in this particular case, this tenant um, 
has uh, been very responsible. Um, and um, it's been a nice partnership between the church and, and, uh, and the schools. And, you know, we don't have many churches that, that you know, are using our property. Um, so is this three-year, um, is it a close contract where there's no increases during the, um, you know, every year, like for cost of living, stuff like that? Uh, for the uh, three year, first three years, uh, yes, it would be, uh, only because of the amount of work that the church has uh, decided to put into our buildings. And the last estimate I had was about $70,000 worth of improvements. And that's to um, the new site at Milani? Right, at Milani. Okay, okay can we have, um, you know, I'm looking at your, um, your breakdown here. Um, is there a breakdown on what they're actually gonna, gonna do at Milani? I don't think it's been finalized, but I'm in uh, very good contact with the church. We've been working very well together, and I will be uh, monitoring uh, to make sure that um, we are in agreement with all of the in, uh, improvements on the site. I just want to make sure that, that we get the word out and, um, and we can communicate to Morningstar that uh, we do appreciate the partnership we've had. And and they're, sure here <laughs> they're here tonight. They're here tonight if you have any questions. <laughs> I, I didn't see them. You know, all these pastors, like our police officers, are getting younger and younger <laughs> as they, you know, every year. <laughs> but, um, no, I really appreciate the, uh, the relationship we have with Morningstar. And mm -hmm. uh, so I also agree that after three years, um, you know, we can negotiate again and, and uh, and talk about renewing the contract at that point, if, if that's okay with making that change. Okay. Mr. Stadler. Yeah, I've got a few questions just on the scope of work that they're doing. Um, the permits, I understand, have not been pulled, correct? Since this is on school property, they don't need city permits. They're, no, but they're going to have to go through uh, DSA. TSA. TSA. Right? Yeah, well, we, uh, we are getting... Uh, uh, we Banner has very nicely uh, helped us in this process, so we will be. Uh, I'll have a team. <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> okay, and and again, this seventy thousand dollars of improvement does not, I understand, include the module home that they're or the module that they're putting on there. Am I correct? Not to my knowledge at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um. So, Mr. Mensinger, and then I have a question or a comment. Yeah, just uh, one other comment on the, on the contract. Um, uh, with uh, all the work that's being done, um, I, we should probably have it mentioned in the contract, or at least in, in uh, an MOU of some sort, that any of the work that's being done on the on school property, if it's done well, you know, during school times, that you know the work has to be done by certain people and they have to be fingerprinted and you know all the rules that go along with and, and then also times have to be scheduled so the work isn't done while students are in school. Uh, yeah. They uh, Morning Star has always been very helpful that way so I, i'm not worried about it but oh, I, they'll work they'll work closely with us oh, I, i'm not worried i'm that. not worried about them not working with us i'm worried <laughs> about us not telling them about the requirements and then oh, suddenly no, they, no, no. they find I'm, out the hard way that no you know, i'll be working closely with them okay um would it be prudent or is there any reason why the board should not see and maybe even approve um the final list and cost estimates for their um improvements um, I, I can work with Morningstar to see if that can happen yeah because I think then if then you know we, we're going on an estimate of 70,000 mm -hmm. it would be important that the board know and be able to approve it if it's 50,000 or 80,000 I mean you know we, we should there might be a it's a, it's a soft number and uh, it's we're giving them and if it's like the rest of our buildings, everything costs a little bit more. And that means they'll be giving us more. But if it were a lot less, then we might look at, need to look at the rent 
um, yeah. situation. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be watching it quite closely. Okay, thank you. Uh, we did have, usually we ask for public or comment on an item before we discuss it. Um, would you like to comment on it now? We're easy. Uh, good evening. But you only have three minutes. I will be quick. Uh, good evening, board. Uh, thanks for discussing this. And we have, uh, we do appreciate the relationship we have with the school district. Uh, it was 10, 11 years ago, so I was slightly younger and didn't have as much facial hair when I started the church with my wife. Um, and uh, over the years now, it's about 240 people in our congregation. Um, and so our family has grown. And, and much of that, we started the church at music and then moved it to Russian. Uh, Lori Marshall worked with us in moving us there. So we do appreciate that partnership and we appreciate you considering and, and we understand that you have no responsibility to find us a home. That's not your responsibility. And so we appreciate uh, the staff working with us so closely. Um, just a couple of things for you to consider. Um, one, just so you know, I know it's a three year lease and we had specifically discussed the optional years with a 5% increase, um, but it, in on our perspective, it was based on the initial cost because we did amortize the improvements over a five-year period. And we had no problem at all with the increase, um, like a normal tenant would have a, you know, a yearly increase in your rate. Uh, the other item, and Nancy, this may go to what you had to say, um, is that the cost estimates are difficult. We can do, I can get quotes that would actually put the remodeling at well over $100,000, uh, but we are intending to do almost all of the work except for things that need specialization. We have an architect in-house, we have a contractor, painting contractors, we have licensed professionals that will be volunteering their services. So it's very, we can get a, a, a very quality, you know, proposal for the job and then turn around and say, we're doing it for supplies. But at the same time, there is a huge value to those dollars. So it would be, and that is why, part of why I approach the district about structuring the lease this way, is it gives you a solid number that you can count on and it gives us a number to work within. So we have something, a budget. Whereas if we go, well, we'll just bill you for what it costs us, on one end, it doesn't do us, it, it doesn't help you because then we have no skin in the game to make sure that these costs, these improvements are done well. And secondly, on, on our end, uh, we are able to go to our congregation and say, uh, this is our facility for these number of years, and we are looking at a five-year window. Uh, just so you know, yes, we understand it's a three-year, and yes, we understand that we can, there is a cause in there, I think it's a 60-day, you can, either party can end it. So we understand that life changes, okay. Um, but we, that was important for us because uh, we are investing for our small congregation, this is a huge, this is the biggest capital campaign I've ever asked our church to undertake. And so, um, and so that is part of why the cost estimates are there, so that we can, we know what we're dealing with. In the game. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and, and if, it's been great working with staff, so thank you. Thank guys. you. Um, given, given that, I, um, I would wonder how the, how my fellow board members would feel about making this a five-year contract with after three years increasing five percent per year um, and then come back to us after five years in the past we've had contracts that seem to go on forever what do you think Ms. Nielsen I'm open to the board's pleasure uh, as far as risk or concern? I, I personally don't have any risk or concern. Um, in the last 11 years, they've shown to be wonderful tenants and gone above and beyond at Russian, so I don't have any problems. And we can, in fact, terminate. We have yes, we ability have ability to terminate. Yes, yes. Well, I, personally, I don't like negotiating in public. Um, and I think it's a bad precedent to start. Um, however, I, I don't have an issue with a three-year contract with an option, uh, with with an option of two or an option of one at a time, and then we look at the costs, uh, the costs associated, because you know things may change. They may put a hundred thousand dollars into it, and we may say that we're going to uh, take that into consideration when we set. 
uh, the rent. So 5% uh, is, you know, I, I'd rather wait three years and then uh, talk about, you know, the rent. Talk to Mark. Uh, oh, and have, like I said, have options so they know that they have a, they have a home for five years. It's just, uh, you know, watching over the, uh, um, the costs associated. All right. Dr. Markin? You know, I, I would just add, and I know that we talked about this last uh, usually telling you to turn the <laughs> mic on, Ms. Nielsen. <laughs> um, I, I know we talked about this last year, but um, when the pastor um, and his congregation led the charge, if you will, of, of getting several other churches together for a work day at Newark Junior High School. And I, I just want to remind the board, not only are they a, are they a great partnership, but there were almost uh, probably 150 volunteers that day that um, I was able to see firsthand uh, the level and scope and dedication that they have not only to the community but to our school and to our students and you know on on behalf of the board and and Newark Unified we I mean you just go through Eve right now through Newark Junior High School and a lot of those Im significant improvements were because of that day and so I, I as long as Josh is here I want to publicly thank him his church and the other churches um, for that day it was a, it was an outstanding day um. Mr. Rodriguez. Um, you know, when you do planning, I go back to my prior history of being on the church deacon board for about 10 years and, and starting a building program, you know, and all the volunteers it takes to reduce that cost in half, and it still doesn't, you know, doesn't pay for, um, you know, the materials and, and when you have to call in different contractors that um, and that brings the cost up so I can I can see where the cost would definitely you know be close to a hundred thousand uh, dollars as time goes on um, exactly where um, are they going to put it, they put it? Um, Mr. Nielsen? I'm sorry I was writing myself a note <laughs> Where's the church going to be? Yeah. Oh, oh. where's the church? What buildings are they going to? Yeah. The um, building is. Uh, I'm getting. It's between the school and the uh, child nutrition building. It's, okay. Yeah, there's an open area there. There's an open oh, area okay. right there. Yeah. And uh, right now. Um, the child care is there, but our new child director would prefer that we have it on the campus at Graham. So I am working. Milani. 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 <laughs> Sorry. That's right. Oh, get my schools confused. But so I'm working with them to do some improvements at Milani into child care and to make it a smooth transition so there would be no disruptions to the children. I'm sorry. Is so, this the current building? Yeah, it's okay. mm -hmm. the current, where the, uh, the current yeah. child care is. Oh, okay, okay, got okay. it. Uh, but that's for the church. But, right, the, the, church. Uh, but the child care will be moving on to the Milani campus. Okay. No, no, I yeah. just want to finish. Um, I, um, again, you know, um, when you do planning and everything as, you know, time and time again, you know, Member Mensinger talks about, about planning. And um, I think five years is something that we really need to do um, so that the congregation knows that, you know, we're guaranteed a partnership for five years. So, so I'm for that also. Um, Mr. Stather, can I? Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah it's, it's your first time. Blood. Yes, go ahead, you, you can speak. I never want to hear you ever again tell me that I act with my heart because you're the one. Um, but I, I want to make it, and tell me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but this modular is for youth ministries, correct? Is this, yes, the modular home that's going on, or the modular building, isn't that going to be used for their youth ministries? It, it is for our children's program and Sundays and our our teenage program called core we do right. a junior high club right now 
Uh, we do three times a year at the junior high after school club, and we have a youth group on Wednesday nights. And so, yes, that's so. What it's so, be. what so, I'm saying to the board is, this is all about newer kids. This, this is who's going to be using. Um. Okay. Fine, the, I'm fine with thank that. you. Uh, is there a way? I I was thinking. What Mr. Menzinger said, if if it's three years with an option for two years, but if it, if at three years instead of just an automatic five percent increase, we should really be looking at market rates again, uh, and and renegotiate the. Um, we we can bring it back for review, yes, and recommendations at that time. Uh, I probably won't be here, but <laughs> oh, the next CBO should be able to work well with the with Josh and his congregation how, how can we ensure that this gets besides just a tickler file that we really know that this has to come back because past experience is that things don't things change and they're not brought back to the board well that's an interior internal process question I know but I'm, I'm right I I have all the faith in the world on my uh, assistant uh, Laura she's keeps me in line which is remarkable uh, and she's very good about keeping me apprised of things that's going to uh, be coming up in the next uh, three to four months so yeah we're always um, planning I have a suggestion for this okay I, I would just suggest that we in the in article two in the term that we we state that it's a three year with an option for two to be renegotiated after year three. Okay. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I want to, I just want to say that while, you know, we're very grateful for all the work that the church has done and we're also uh, understand that they're great partners, our first, um, uh, we, we, our first allegiance has to be to our students and our staff. So we have to make sure that um, uh, that we that when we sign contracts that that we understand that that the rates are covering our costs and and um, uh, so I, I just want to be I, I want to be clear about that that's you know that's a bit that's that you know MBA that's coming out uh, yeah. talking now the the the, other, the only other question that I have is I'm sort of confused about what we have we have a, a modular system a modular or a, a, a what, what is this like a portable or something that they're putting on there and they're putting on it okay and then there's a building as well that's ours so that used to be yes. the child care mm -hmm. so it's so there's a building that used to be the child care and this and this sort of portable kind of thing and the and the money that's going is to upgrade this this what was the child care facilities to whatever they deem is necessary for their for their church, uh, uh, with approval from um, staff. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Okay, right. I, I'm I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, yeah. So I, I would only recommend then, in terms of changes, is is that uh, in the term that we add the um, an option for two years, and uh, to be renegotiated re re after um, after the. Uh, uh, after years. year three and that gives them at least five years they know that they um, that they can they be have a home. they have a home okay uh, dr. Markin did, did well, you the only thing I would something? add just to your concern um, member Thomas and what we do is we we have a year board planning calendar and and technically it goes out for a, for a couple years because several of the things like the first interim have to be done by a certain date and those are placeholders what we could do this week is put a placeholder item a couple years down the road for for that particular item and that's that's how we build the calendar anyway but I think that's a very logical thing to do prior to the three years good okay mr. Mensinger again uh, that was me. I already did. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, do we have a motion? I'll motion to well to have a three year, and after a three year, renegotiate a two year. Okay. Uh, so, so the so the con the the term section will three years plus two years option. Plus so that's a change to the contract. Right. As, 
So uh, approval with that amendment. Which means they're going to have to renegotiate with Morningstar because. Okay. Do, do they have to bring it back to us? No, we're, we're, approving. Oh. we're approving. Okay. And so is there a second? Second. Okay. I'll please vote. Four eyes. Thank you. And thank you, Josh. Thank you, sir. So next we hear from our represented represented units. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, well, I could ask for comment on on uh, uh, the consent agenda items. Is there any comment before I call up Mr. Blitel to speak on behalf of NTA? Uh, good evening, board and cabinet and staff. So I thought I'd, I'd start this evening um, talking about Bat Kid. Oh, awesome. And you know, here's a, here's someone that we could really. The whole situation is just awesome. You know, where you have a whole community, not even a community, not the state, but but actually the entire world has gotten into this. You know, you know, when you had a few hundred volunteers that were going to be there for this this guy and it turned out to be 11,000 and then just the following that he had it's amazing how people can come together for a cause and to do something right and to do something that's appropriate yes. and that's what we do that's why we're here that's that's the job that we all do we're here for our students and we're to, we're here to do what's right um, so I want to com comment about a couple of things one uh, the, uh, the teachers and NUSD leadership are, are going to be undertaking a collaborative task by creating a team to look at uh, new evaluation uh, techniques, uh, evaluation techniques that are more appropriate for our teachers, new evaluation techniques that are in line with our new Common Core curriculum. And, uh, you know, we look forward to this collaborative approach working with NUSD and, and looking at uh, methods that are more appropriate that involve, you know, multiple methods and, you know, rather than just little checklists that we use right now, something more appropriate. Um, I also want to mention, uh, you know, it's nice to hear uh, from everybody here and, you know, the, the, the deal with the, the child care at Milani, you know, that, that you find find people homes. You know, we find homes for the people that uh, we've worked with well, and that's what Newark does. I, I want to invite everybody to uh, Bunker School's annual turkey trot. <laughs> uh, that's coming up this Thursday, and I thought I'd just take this time. You know, it's uh, it's something that Bunker has done, and it's it's fun. And it's 8:30. It starts at 8:20 in the morning. It lasts about an hour, and it's an opportunity to see the entire uh, bunker kids out there running for turkeys. And uh, it, you know, hopefully, it's not going to rain. It's a fun time, so it'd be nice to see some faces out there to cheer on our student body. Uh, the last thing, as uh, the negotiations chair, um, I'm I'm hoping that things will turn out well. And just to keep in mind that uh, NTA, our, our association, you know, we've, uh, we've taken concessions and we've, we've made things work. And, you know, for three years we, we made those concessions and we, we've been working hard and hopefully that, uh, you know, the board will see that and we can maintain our, our quality teaching staff. And, you know, we've got a lot of new things coming down. We've got, uh, you know, smarter balance. We've got the Common Core. We've got a lot of staff development. We've got to get out and train our folks. And it'd be nice to have a consistent uh, crew out there working hard to educate our students for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our CTA rep, Susan, w was saying she didn't need to address us today. But we are delighted that you're here and that you're staying. Thank you for being here. Next, we. Um, Move on to 
new business A. New business, now that I'm down there. Summary of donations. Um, move to approve item new business item A. Is there a second? I'll second. Please vote. Thank you. Um, Superintendent, did you want to um, say anything in regard to this? Well, I would just highlight the donations to the board. Thank you, um, Vice President Thomas. Target Corporation donated $39 to Newark Memorial High School as part of their Take Charge of Education program. Parchment Inc. donated $947 to Newark Memorial High School. And a Shell Con DBA Elio's Jewelry, Jewelry Repair donated $500 for the purchase of a class set materials for room three at Whiteford. How nice. Oh, right. uh, that was our spotlight uh, this evening. So uh, thanks to all of our uh, partners and all of our people in our community that um, donate to help the education of our students. It's just always great to be able to share these with the board. Thank you. We move on to uh, item B, first interim report. We had a nice re um, staff report on that. Um, Mr. Stadler moves. Second. Mr. Mansinger seconds. Please vote. Okay, four to zero with uh, Ms. Crocker absent to approve the first interim report. Next, we move on to board policies, and we have. Um, a group of policies under C that we are being asked to approve in one fell swoop. Um, board policy 4030, non-discrimination in employment. Board policy in administrative regulations um, on professional standards. California professional standards for educational leadership. Is there any discussion? Mr. Rodriguez. I'd like to move that we approve uh, new business item C. Second. Second. Please vote. Four ayes. Member Crocker absent. Thank you. With that, we move on to um, committee reports, announcements, requests, and uh, debrief and discussion. And this evening, I'd like to start with Mr. Mensinger. Um, nothing for me. Mr. Maybe Rod a defibrillator for uh, Mr. Stadler. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez. No, again, I, again, I'd like to um, share with everybody the fun time that, um, that we all had at uh, American High School with the uh, Special Ed Olympics. Um, you know, it's been great. And, um, and you know, visiting the junior high and, and the different schools as time permits. And uh, um, Dr. Markin has, as, as usual, put together an excellent team of administrators and uh, that uh, take care of our kids, and, and it's appreciated. Um, on the request side, I, um, we had a, um, a board item that we, uh, that we discussed at the last board meeting about parking at the um, at specifically at the high school and um, we got so involved or you know in having a conversation with Commander Carroll that um, um, I wanted to to um, make a recommendation for action at that particular meeting but I I just got lost in the in the whole dialogue and didn't um, so um, I'm asking staff um, if they wouldn't mind. Um, I mentioned at that at that meeting that we some of the schools have those signs, and half of our schools do, and half our schools don't. So um, I'd like to get some information on what it would cost to um, to remove the signs from all our sites. And if that's not the pleasure of the board, then it would be to. Uh, to have the signs and all that site. But I, I just want to be consistent, um, if that's possible. Which Dr. signs Mark. are you talking about? Yeah, no, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, which signs are you talking about? Yeah. The, the, um, the parking? Yeah, the signs that talk about the code, the violation code. 
you know, the white signs. Right. Um, we have none at the junior high, and some of the elementaries don't have none. Personally, I, um, um, I think it's an item that after we get the cost that should come back to the board so the board can have a discussion on whether we want to have all the signs taken down at all our sites or, um, or you know, um, put new signs at the sites that don't have them so we can be consistent. It's a little confusing for our, for instance, um, I don't think Lincoln has any, um, for our elementary school parents um, to not have any signs and then when they get to junior high school, there's no signs and then when they get to the high school, all of a sudden, you know, there's signs everywhere. So, um, so I just want to be consistent. So if, if we can get, uh, you know, the, depending on how the board wants to go, the, the cost of removing all the signs from the sites where we do have the signs or the cost of adding new signs um, to the schools that don't have them so we can be consistent. We can have both those two items and hopefully bring it back to the board and then the board can decide how they want to proceed. Okay. That's basically what I'm asking. Okay. I don't know, uh, are those signs owned by the, by the uh, city of Newark? Or? It, it would be my guess and I, I don't know, this is the first that I've heard of this, I would assume that they are from the city and from the police department, it would be my guess. And again, I'm just guessing that um, the signs have to be in place in order to issue a ticket. So by, I, I would assume by removing the signs, you're removing the legal responsibility. Typically, and we can get those costs. We will, you know, we'll do whatever the board wants to have done. Typically, those are done more at secondary, um, high schools, junior highs, just because of the sheer volume of the lot and right. the number of times that it's used. But we can cost those out and we'll find out from the city exactly where they were. And, and I, I would assume that they must be posted in order to issue a ticket, but I may be wrong. But we'll bring that information. Okay. Would Do you like it in a Friday update or in a... Well, unless, you, unless the board uh, wants, to, um, wants to bring it back, um, and have a discussion again on the on the parking issue. Um, I don't know. It's, it's it seems to me the that board. the um, the cost would be within the ability of the staff to um, to take care of if it if it, if there is a cost if they want to replace mm -hmm. all of them and if they want to take them so, down maybe that's a discussion the board should have anyway. Sure. So initially you could do it as Friday update sure. and then the board can decide. And if they it's good back. timing. We do have a law enforcement meeting this Thursday, so we'll probably be able to get, I can give them a heads up to get some information that we might need to help make a better decision. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Mr. very much. Mr. Stadler. I want to say again how much fun we had at the Special Olympics. It was fantastic. Also, our Newark Memorial Band marched in the Veterans mm. Day Parade in San Francisco and for those of you who haven't seen the video, they have come a long way. They mm -hmm. were fantastic. I mean, awesome. you guys, it's on Facebook. It's, I think it's on, if I get all my social media mixed up, that one with the TV, what is it? Uh, YouTube. YouTube, thank you, Tim, on YouTube. And you guys will, it's very impressive. Or Instagram. Or whatever, yeah. <laughs> um, I also wanted to make a, we're having the lighting of the Newark Christmas tree on December 2nd, and our choir is going to sing. The high school mm -hmm. choir will be there. Um, I wanted to thank you for the bunker visit, the Kennedy visit. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, our principal over at Bunker, the new principal, is doing a fantastic job. That school is looking good. Kennedy's principal is great, and we all knew that. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to make I wanted to wish everybody, you know, happy Thanksgiving. Um, we've had a lot of board meetings this month, a lot. Yeah. We're having a board meeting December 10th, and we'll get all of our business done then. I wanted to make a motion to cancel December 17th board meeting, if that would make the rest of the board happy. We've normally had one meeting in December. It, that's it, what I was going to say. We, we normally only have one meeting in December. Well, does staff need a meeting for any purpose? I'm fine with my, that. Might I suggest that we um, only have the meeting on December 17th if staff feels there's a necessity to do it, and if they don't, then, then, then we'll wish everybody a happy holidays on the 10th. 
Because you know we you never know. Sometimes sometimes things oh. come up like you know. Let's hope that we get a nice. Sorry, don't hang on, hang on. Let's hope that we get a nice Christmas present like a contract, and we have to ratify it. And if that's the kind of thing that happens, then maybe we have to get together. But other than that, let's um, let's try not to I have agree. a meeting. I think it's by consensus. I think it's okay. okay. Do we yeah. have to vote on that? I don't think so. I don't think we can vote anyway. It's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda anyway. Right. Thank so, you. That's all I have. Okay. And so I just want to say uh, the few schools I visited with you, Dr. Mark, and it was very enjoyable. Um, when you're looking into the sign issue, as you know, Ms. Um, Parks has repeatedly come before this board and said that our signage is incorrect. In, in terms of legal issues. Uh, and I think the thing she's pointed out is that according to Ed Code or Government Code, that um, uh, parents are not part of the universe that, that has to um, sign in when they go into a school site. So uh, just, just something to check into. We'd be happy to do that. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about last night's meeting at all? Oh, yes. Um, we had a, Charlie, Mr. Mensinger and I had a very um, nice meeting with Ms. Nielsen and our, our principal from the high school and uh, two representatives from the Booster Club to talk about next steps in terms of uh, uh, revising their bylaws to, to meet concerns that, that have come from the community and others and to have uh, a set of elections. And so I think there's good progress made on that um, score. Maybe we can, together, we can write something up and have it, uh, give it to staff uh, about, you know, sort of a trip report kind of thing and have Elaine look at it and then uh, um, staff and then maybe put it in the Friday update so the okay. rest of the board can see. Um, Mr. We, Rodriguez, we, we can, them. If you want, we can write it up. One of us can write it up, give it to you guys. You guys can look at it so you don't have to do any extra work. Okay. Maybe Dr. Markin can thank the junior high school for it. Oh, yeah. Would you work. please? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm on the Avanzando board, and we had a meeting last night, and um, we're having a event at Graham Elementary tomorrow at 6 p.m., and it's going to be on child nutrition, and it's going to be in both languages. So um, if you guys have time, and then Dr. Markin, could you talk about the one that's, is it simultaneously, the one, um, the wellness? Um, is that the <laughs> um, Susan from uh, Tabusia Vasquez is having, is that going to be, I think that's going to be here. Um, at the same time, and it's the wellness program with Tabitha Vasquez. Um, you, I am drawing a yes. complete blank. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. <laughs> okay. I'm totally sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, um, I think that's going to be right here. And uh, the partnership we have with Tabitha Vasquez has grown, and and uh, they're very active in the um, at Pitch Point and and uh, and also at the junior high. So. Um, so they're having a event also from six to eight tomorrow, and it's going to be here. So, um, so I'm going to the one at the Graham should end by seven, and then I'll be over here. So you guys welcome to come and uh, and see the partnership that we have with uh, with Avin Sandor and also with Rizzo Vasquez. Great, thank, thank you. you. Uh, with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>